What's up guys, hope you're having a great day. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to win more hardpoint matches and also pretty much filling you in on everything that you need to know about the new game mode. Now the reason I actually decided to make this video was because in my last rank hardpoint video I saw a lot of people in the comment section that actually have no idea how to play hardpoint and also when I've been ranking recently most of my randoms seem like they have no idea what's going on. So if you're one of those people, don't worry. By the end of this video, hopefully you should know everything that you possibly need to know about hardpoint. Now the first thing that I actually need to go over before we get further into this video is how professional COD teams played hardpoint in the past. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well this is COD Mobile and that was COD Console. They're a little bit different and you're right, they are different, but they're still both 5v5s. But it is still the same game mode and a lot of the maps are also the same. So we can take that basic strategy and implement it into COD Mobile. So once we go over the competitive side of things, then I'm going to teach you how to translate that into solo queue because obviously a five man competitive team is very different from you just running into a bunch of randoms in solo rank. So typically on an organized competitive team, each player knows what role they're playing before they actually hop into a match. Now there are three main roles when you're playing hardpoint. Anchor, Slayer, and Objective. So the first role that I'm actually going to go over here is actually called the Anchor. Now I'm not going to spend that much time on this because it's going to be really hard to do in solo ranked and even if you're on a competitive team because I honestly don't really know how spawns work in COD Mobile Hardpoint yet. If somehow I figure them out in the future and it turns out they're not completely random, then I might make just a separate video on how to play Anchor. I might make a separate video on each of these roles if you guys really want me to. Now I'm going to read a really short summary of what an Anchor actually does. Does. of course it's not the thing that you throw off the side of a boat an anchor is possibly the hardest role to understand for a newcomer the anchor literally anchors the team to a spawn so in other words by sitting in a certain spot or area they maintain the spawn area for their team so what that pretty much means is the anchor controls where your team spawns at for example if you know where the next hard point is you get your anchor to rotate over there and anchor a spot near that hard point that you know people spawn usually at so the next time your team dies your team should be spawning right around the anchor so that means they'll be able to get to the hard point faster than the other team and it's better to have more people spawning near the hard point than away from it because it takes time to actually get there and it's just better to have more bodies to actually throw at or defend the hill with so that's pretty much all you need to know about the anchor i don't know if it's that important of a role yet so i'm not going to go that in depth into it i also don't know the spawns for hard point yet i don't even know if an anchor would even affect the spawns because i've had people spawn right next to me a lot of the time when i'm in hard point so the next role is actually called Slayer and this is the one that I play. So what the Slayer does is they slay. This person needs to be extremely good at killing multiple enemies and staying alive without necessarily being behind cover. So sometimes if their team has control of the hill, the Slayer may push out through the hill to stop the enemy before they actually reach the hill. That is extremely, extremely important. This is so important because that means the gunfights aren't happening inside of the hill and it means that contesting doesn't occur and they can actually tell their team members where the enemy is and where they're coming from. When you're the Slayer, since you're playing outside of the hill, the enemies are not gonna be expecting you to be there, so you actually have a greater chance of winning your gunfights because you're prepared for them. Now, of course, this does not mean that you're 24-7 outside of the hill running around killing people. Whenever the enemies gain control of the objective, you should be pushing with your team to help break the hill. Now, you're actually going to be hearing me say break a couple more times throughout this video. And what it means when I say that is just you pretty much push with your team, kill all the enemies inside of the hard point, flip spawns, and take control. Now, the last role, but not least important, is OBJ, or objective player. Now, real quick before we go any further, I haven't really talked about it yet but there should be an amount of players for each role so what that means is there should be one anchor two slayers and usually two objectives but since it is cod mobile and we're not sure if anchor even works yet i would say three slayers and two objective players on each team now sometimes even though you have two objective players one of them may push through like a slayer to slow the enemies down that's completely fine but the main role of the objective player is to break and hold hard points now it may sound easy, but it's really not because you have to be prepared for grenades, concussions, smokes, and enemies and specialists to all come at you. So you have to be running trophy systems when you're playing as objective. You do have the advantage of cover when you're inside the hill, unlike the slayers outside, but you also have to have good aim and gunfight strategy to capture it. So when you're pushing in to capture the objective, you have to be working with your other OBJ players to successfully break the hill. 
OBJs should normally have really good reactions and predictions and what that means is you should know what doorway they're coming through or if they're already inside the hill what corner they might be camping in so you can come around that corner and be prepared for them. So that's pretty much the basic rundown of each role and what they do in hardpoint. Now you're probably wondering how does this actually affect me, especially when I'm solo queuing with random players that I don't even communicate with. Well don't worry because in the second half of this video we're going to be actually translating all of this knowledge into solo queue, but before we do that I need to teach you about basic rotations and strategy for hardpoint. Because all you know right now is a little bit about the three different roles, but there's a lot more to it than that. So the first thing that I'm gonna ask you to do is memorize each hard point for every single ranked map. Now, this does seem like I'm asking a lot, but over time of just playing through each map, you naturally should remember where the next one is. It'll just come into your mind. So you don't need to really worry that much. So once you learn where each hard point is, you should be practicing early rotations. Now what this means is your team should be leaving one to two players back in the hill while the rest of you rotate to the next one. Now you should really start the rotation process when there's around 20 seconds left in the old hill. So what this means is when you see there's a 20 seconds left on the hill you're currently in, you should take at least three to four players and start rotating and moving to the next hard point. So the reason for actually doing this is because it's a lot easier to hold a hard point than it is to break one. So what this means is that if you rotate around 20 seconds early and you have one or two players stay back in the point, they can probably contest for a few more seconds so the enemy team maybe gets like 15, 20 seconds max while you're already setting up in the next hard point, getting prepared and having it locked down. So you have a greater chance of holding that for the whole next amount of time. So trust me when I say this, early rotations are extremely 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 important when you're playing hardpoint so to sum up pretty much what i've said so far is that you should have two obj players inside of the hardpoint with trophy systems ready for enemies to push and then you should have three outside of the point killing enemies and making sure that they don't get close enough to even contest. Then when there's around 20 seconds left in the point, you should be rotating to the next one. Now you noticed I probably haven't said anything about breaking the hard point yet. That's because there's just a million different ways to do it and it really depends on how your team's playing, what kind of equipment you're running, etc, etc. But the basics of what should be happening is five players pushing at the same time, not at separate times. I see that happen all the time. People go in one by one to a hard point and just get gunned down. You should all be pushing at the same time, trying to break that point and then once you do splitting up and going to your separate roles now we're going to be talking about how you can implement these strategies and roles into your solo queue matches now if you never solo queue and you always have a team of five players that you can actually communicate with and you always go into rank with them you don't need to listen to this you can just take the strategies from earlier that i talked about and pretty much just use them but when you're solo queuing 90 percent of the time you're just gonna have random teammates who have absolutely no idea what's going on so what you need to do is play flex or a more flexible role so for example if you notice a lot of your team is playing inside of the hill they're just sitting inside it waiting to die or get rocketed or whatever you need to switch to the slayer role even if you're not the best slayer in the world you just need to do it because your team is obviously not playing that so what you're gonna do of course is just start playing outside of the hard point and killing enemies and making sure they don't shoot your random teammates who are inside the hard point who actually can't get a single kill or maybe and most of the time the exact opposite is happening your team is actually playing it like it's a team deathmatch and they're just running around randomly trying to shoot people so what you should do in that situation is obviously play obj play inside the hard point get early rotations and set up and protect those points for your team and let your team just run around and do whatever they want. So for solo queue, you have to be a flexible player and you just got to take one for the team sometimes. So probably the most important and effective way that you can help your team win in solo ranking is if you rotate early. Now I said earlier, 20 seconds is around the average time that a pro player rotates, but in solo queue, you can probably rotate around 15 seconds because the enemies most likely aren't going to be good enough to know to do that. And if they are, you can probably blame me because they watch this video. But anyhow, you should be rotating early. That's super effective because that means you're going to be able to gain control of the point and you're going to have your team spawn around you when they die and just have control of the next hard point for like 30, 40 seconds, whatever. Now, I do admit it's very hard to play hard point when you're solo queuing. A lot of the time, it would just be better to grab a random friend, have them play objective, you play Slayer or flip flop. 
Now this is only if worse comes to worse, but if you need to, you can always sit outside of the hard point, bait your team, get a bunch of kills, rack up score streaks, and then rotate to the next one so you get extra points for being the first one in that, then hop out of it, and then wait for the enemies to push it while you kill them, and then just slowly build up your score streaks, use them, and then while they're up, or say you can put a Goliath in the hard point, I think you actually get points if you have a Goliath in the hard point. So you can bait your team, get score streaks, get them out and just grab the remaining time and maybe clutch up the game. That's what I like to do sometimes, but I hope you guys learned something in today's video. Coach Godsley came out for a second there. Uh, anyways, that's the end. I'm going to see you guys next time. Click the like button actually if you enjoy this type of video because I will make more. I just want to see if you guys enjoy it. I don't know. Sometimes these do videos do really well. Sometimes they don't. And if you're new here, subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.